now come to the next one now the question number is fifth okay now we'll talk about question number fifth now what they are asking children the question number fifth is give reason now the first give reason is water is not used to control fires involving electrical equipments okay so what is the case children we have discussed one point before that water cannot be used to extinguish the fire which is you know or the fire uh, if the oil catches fire we cannot use water over there in the similar way if electrical appliances catches fire uh, we cannot use water first of all you know even if you remove the plug okay even if you remove the plug and if you add water to that that electrical appliance will be totally of no use okay already the fire is there that means it is damaged to a lot, of, lot extent but again if you drop water to that so it will be of no use okay and when we talk about a big fire due to the electrical circuits or something like that so we all know very nicely that if the fire which is uh, caused due to the or when the fire is due to the electricity then in this condition if water is used then there is a total you know um, now chances of a person who try to extinguish it with the help of water to get shock okay so the person can get uh, shock it can get current okay so that is the reason why it is not uh, the water is not at all used to extinguish fires which are there due to the electricity okay so what we will write the person may what get current or be the, the, the in the body the current can be passed or the person can get the shock so very short and sweet answer the person who tries to extinguish the electric fire may get shock ok now even if the condition worsen so the current may spread the current may spread and can take lot of lives okay so what is there the person who tries to extinguish the electric fire may get shock okay and the current may spread and can take lot of lives in which case children if water is used okay if water is used okay so this uh, can be very very dangerous okay that is the reason you know in such kind of fires the carbon dioxide is used so what happened you know carbon due to carbon dioxide what will happen the uh, you know the, the oxygen will get cut off okay so even uh, this can be used or even uh, you know different uh, extinguishers which we have read like carbon tetrachloride even that can be used okay so that was all about why water cannot be used for the electrical fires now we'll move to the next one this one was a okay here also i have given the sub points a and b but basically this was fifth a okay now we'll move to the next one now this one is fifth b okay lpg is better domestic fuel than wood 
Now, children, the same question they have asked again. So, I do not think so that we have to do it again. Just on this side, if you remember, I wrote the difference between the LPG and wood. Difference between LPG and wood, that means I have written, I wrote how LPG can be more useful in comparison to the wood or, or vice versa. Like how, like why wood uh, should be avoided and how it can harm us. The using of wood as a fuel can be very dangerous and disastrous for us. So, that question is done. So, we will just skip B and I will write over here be yourself. Okay. So, this B we have done and just you can frame it in one a word two can be you know moved here and there and can be used. Okay. Now, come to the question number C. Paper by itself catches fire. Okay. Paper by itself catches fire easily whereas, a piece of paper wrapped around an aluminum pipe does not, does not. Okay. So, what they are talking about? They are saying that if we try to burn a piece of paper, okay, if we try to burn a piece of paper, it catches fire. But at the same time, if we wrap the aluminum foil inside it, then the paper do not catch the fire. Why is it so? So, children, we have discussed that we have even, you know, talk, we have discussed about an experiment in which if the paper is uh, burnt in a simple way. So, the paper catches fire automatically it will catch very simple thing ok we all know that, but when uh, a bowl was made out of paper in that the water was filled and then when it was heated. So, it was also possible for water you know for it was possible for the water to boil in that, that means it was possible for us to boil water in paper bowl. Why it did not burn? Because whatever heat was given ok or whatever heat was taken by paper was reaching or was being passed to water ok. And so, water's temperature was raising high, it came up to boiling, but it did not uh, reach like it was not reaching to the paper means it was reaching to the paper, but it was going where? It was going to the water. That means, it was not utilized by the paper. Okay. In the same way, here also the heat, whatever will be given to the paper will be passing where? To the aluminum foil. Okay. And that is the reason that that, uh, that the fire would not take place. Okay. It would not catch fire, because for the simple reason that again due to the conduction, the heat whatever will be supplied to the paper will be passed to the aluminum and will be what it will try to bring down to burn first aluminum which will, which will not take place so easily. That is the reason paper remains safe. Okay. So, again I will read a question for you. See, paper by itself catches fire easily. Whereas, a piece of paper wrapped around an aluminum pipe does not catches the fire. So, what answer should I write children? See, because the heat which is given to the paper reaches to aluminum ok reaches to aluminum through conduction And thus, paper is paper do not or do not or do not do not catch fire. Okay. Because the heat which is given to the paper reaches to aluminum 
through conduction and the paper do not catch fire. Why? Because again to you know to simplify. So paper do not reaches to its ignition point. Paper do not reaches to its ignition point. Why do not reach to its ignition point? Because that heat, okay, capital A I have written over here, so make it small, okay. So why paper is not burning? Because in this, it is the same example which we have discussed that when we burn the paper in normal, it will catch fire. But when a bowl is being made of the paper and in that water is uh, added, okay. So due to this what was happening, the heat whichever was supplied over there, it was you know it was going towards where it was going to the water, okay and it was utilized to raise the temperature of the water, okay and here also the same thing is happening that is the reason that uh, it does not catches fire. Now we will talk about the next question now, fifth question is over now come to the next question make a label diagram of a candle flame. Now we will come to the question number 6 make a label diagram of the what of a candle flame. So children we have uh, discussed this answer I have discussed this answer while explaining the question uh, while explaining the chapter also ok. So, so this question was discussed and even the diagram was drawn in the explanation. So I do not think so that again there is a need to draw the diagram ok. So we will just move to the next question children. Question number 7 is name the unit in which the calorific value of a fuel is expressed. Let me read the question again for you name the unit in which the calorific value of a fuel is expressed ok. Now first of all what is the meaning of calorific value? So, what is the meaning of for the first of all, what is the meaning? So, the amount of heat which is required uh, or the amount of heat which is produced rather, ok, the amount of heat which which is uh, you know produced on burning on combustion of 1 kg fuel, ok. So, again when you uh, when we talk about the LPG and wood uh, that comparison, there even you can add this point also that calorific heat ok. The calorific heat is more in case of LPG while it is low in case of wood ok. That means the heat which is produced ok due to LPG if to produce equal amount of heat by wood. So, it will require uh, you know the wood in great quantity. So, what is the meaning of calorific value? The amount of heat which is produced on the complete combustion of 1 kg of fuel ok. So, how it is expressed children? So, we have discussed that day also. So, see whenever you uh, you know try to explain express any kind of uh, like when you talk about any quantity ok, any quantity. So, it is very very important to write the units to know the units ok. So, here also we will write the units it is kilo joules by kg ok. If I have to write short form, so what I can write over here or I can write kg like k and j ok and upon kg. So, you know uh, always it is very very important to mention the units. So, what it is kilo joules k j ok by k g. So, it is expressed in this way ok. So, what is calorific heat children? The amount of heat which is produced on the combustion of complete combustion of 1 kg of fuel. So, the calorific value of or the calorific heat of LPG is much higher than that of the wood ok. Just let me write the question number children this question was 7th ok. I will write over here 6 yourself ok. Now 
come to the next question. Now, explain how CO2. I'll just let me write the number. Okay. Now, explain how CO2 is able to control the fire. Okay. Again, uh, just a explanation. Explain how CO2 is able to control fire. Children, we all know for combustion, for burning, oxygen is required. Okay. If oxygen is not available, if oxygen get reduced, then what will happen? Automatically, the combustion will reduce. The combustion will stop and the level of carbon dioxide get increased. Okay. So, what is the question children? Explain how CO2 is able to control fire. So, when, when CO2 oses out, okay. so what happen children? The CO2 can, like when CO2 is present, it is reducing the amount of what? Uh, oxygen and for combustion oxygen is required ok and when we talk about the extinguishers ok about the combustion so in that combustion that extinguisher uh, that fire uh, extinguishers even the water is produced children so you know carbon dioxide and water then these two work in the excellent way is not it water what does it do water reduces the ignition temperature ok that means it reduces the ignition temperature means what it does not allow that temperature that means it uh, that what due to the spray of the water the substance cannot reach to that ignition temperature to its ignition temperature that means the water it reduces the temperature of that substance ok uh, rather I should not use, uh, use the word ignition temperature but I should say that water lowers the temperature of that substance and due to that it do not reach to the ignition temperature ok and uh, again CO2 it cut off the uh, what presence like it reduces the presence of oxygen and in that way two things two principles ok they start working together and so fire get extinguished ok. We have discussed this thing also that as for the combustion three things are required ok what the presence of combustible material ok then the supporter uh, the presence of supporter that means presence of oxygen and again to, uh, to uh, like you know ignition temperature the, the substance should reach to that ignition temperature. In the same way when we talk about the extinguishing of a fire again three things are necessary absence of combustible material which is not at all possible to remove ok. Is it possible to remove everything which is burning in front of you? You cannot remove all the things which burns which catches fire ok. So, second and third thing what is the second thing? The supporter has to be removed ok. Supply of oxygen has to be cut off and the third thing is to reduce the temperature of the substance so that it cannot reach to the ignition temperature ok. To reduce the temperature of a substance so that it cannot reach to the ignition temperature. So, these two principles are used for extinguishing the fire. Now, when we talk about carbon dioxide, so what carbon dioxide does? It cut off the supply like it replaces the oxygen and we all know for combustion ok. What is required we all know. for burning or combustion oxygen is required but carbon dioxide replaces oxygen thus leading to extinguishing leading to extinguish of fire. So, we all know for burning or combustion oxygen is required, but CO2 replaces oxygen thus leading to extinguish of fire ok. This was our eighth answer. Now, come to the next one children. 
ok the ninth question is very interesting now it is difficult to burn a hip of green leaves but dry leaves catches fire easily I will repeat the question children it is difficult to burn a hip of green leaves but dry leaves catches fire easily see children you know see whenever the when we talk about the green I will have to explain this because this was not there in the chapter so you know whenever the grass is green ok that means the cells are living hmm? when the cells are living that means it has got amount of water in it ok water is there cellulose is there lignin is there and you know all these ok this cellulose and lignin this have high ignition temperature ok all these have high ignition temperature and second thing when heat is given to green grass ok when heat is supplied to green grass so whatever heat is supplied will be utilized to evaporate the water ok will be utilized to evaporate the water until unless the water get evaporated the grass will not be able to burn but when we talk about the dry grass that means it is dead dead that means cells are dead that means it do not contain water because it is already squeezed off it is not there when water is not there so it easily like moisture is not there so it easily reaches to its ignition temperature ok so that is the reason the dry grass gets like it catches fire easily because it get it reaches to its ignition temperature easily while the wet one as it has got water in it as it has got moisture in it it cannot reach to its ignition temperature ok so let us write the answer as the green grass has water so could not reach to its ignition temperature due to moisture but as the dry grass do not have water reaches to its ignition temperature easily and thus catches fire ok so what is the answer children as the green grass has water so could not reach to its ignition temperature due to moisture but as the dry grass do not have water reaches to reaches to its ignition temperature easily and thus catches fire ok that means children it is important to reach to the ignition temperature until unless to you reach to that like you reach means that the substance reaches to the ignition temperature the substance can't catch the fire so at most important that the substance should reach to that that minimum temperature hmm? that minimum temperature which is required to catch fire ok so this was about the question why green grass do not burn while the dry grass burns very very 
easily. Now we'll just move to the next answer children. The next question is which zone of a flame does a goldsmith use for melting gold and silver and why? I'll read the question children again. Which zone of a flame does a goldsmith use for melting gold and silver and why? While discussing the structure of the flame, we have discussed that the outermost part is which part? Non-luminous part. When the part is, we say that it is non-luminous, that means the total combustion is taking place. Okay. Okay, when the total combustion is taking place, that why it is taking place? Because ample amount of oxygen is available. Okay, so now we will go in this way. As ample amount of oxygen, as sufficient amount of oxygen is available, the outer flame, okay, the outer is which kind of flame? It is non-luminous flame or the a part where the total combustion take place. Okay, and this is the part as the total combustion is taking place, the heat which is evolved is highest okay so heat evolved is very high and so okay it is used by the what goldsmiths okay so why it is you why they have asked which flame is used children and they have also asked that why it is used so this is the which part it is the hottest part of the flame and so it is used by the goldsmith so we will write the answer number 10 over here as it is very small it will I will be able to fit the answer over here ok. So, what is the question which zone of a flame does a goldsmith use ok which flame. So, it is non luminous flame children non luminous flame is used ok non luminous flame is used by the goldsmith ok and this zone can be or known non luminous zone or non luminous flame can also be known as what the combustion ok now. So, like whether total zone of a to complete combustion it can also be known in this way ok rather I should write it non luminous flame or zone of complete combustion. Okay, and children, why it is used? I'll write in short. Okay, it is A point and B point because it is the hottest part of the flame. Okay, it is the hottest part of the flame. So, non luminous flame or zone of complete combustion is utilized. Okay, I have written in short, please elaborate the answer because it is the hottest part of the flame. I am not able to write over here, but it is H. Okay, now we will move to the next question, children. Now, it is a numerical in an experiment. 4.5 kg of a fuel was completely burned ok. In an experiment 4.5 kg of a fuel was completely burnt. The heat produced was measured to be just have a look what it is ok. This much is given kg joules. Now calculate the calorific value of the fuel. Now just to apply the calorific values formula. Ok, Kj upon Kg. So, what is Kj? Write the value of Kj and write the value of Kg and this solve the question. It is very very easy. Just I will give you an example. Now, we will solve the question number 11 children. So, please come to the question number 11. Ok, so uh, it is a numerical. So, first of all we write the formula calorific value is equal to kj upon kg ok. 
so here kg they have given yeah they have given this amount okay and kg also they have given okay it's how much it's 4.5 okay so what can be more simpler than this so just divided by this isn't it so we'll get the answer okay so after just a simple calculation which has to be done okay so i have written over here in short this one is this this one is this so just you will have to divide this and you will get the answer now come to the next question children can the process of rusting be called combustion discuss this we have already done in the extra questions so i don't think so that we have to do it again so we'll move to the next question children abida and ramesh were doing an experiment in which water was to be heated in a beaker the same experiment as i was or we were talking about okay so abida and ramesh were doing an experiment in which water was to be heated in a beaker now abida kept the beaker near the wick okay abida kept the beaker near the wick in the yellow part of the candle flame see without getting confused just remember outermost part is the hottest part okay outermost part is the hottest part and so uh, if the substance is kept in the hottest part obviously it is going to get uh, heated first so you know without wasting a time without wasting time even for a single second just uh, remember this thing that outermost part is a part which is hottest okay so ramesh kept the beaker in the outermost part just it has it is there so ramesh kept the beaker in the outermost part of the flame whose water will get heated in a shorter time so we all know children outermost part is the which part it is the hottest part and so obviously ramesh will be able to get hot water faster in comparison to abida okay i'll just write the answer in very very short this one is answer number 13 okay so ramesh will be able to get hot water faster as the outermost part is the non luminous zone or zone of complete combustion okay which is the hottest part of the flame okay so ramesh will be able to get hot water faster as the outermost part is the non luminous zone or zone of complete combustion which is the hottest part of the flame that is the reason so it will be what the person who use utilizes this part will be getting what more amount of heat okay now this i think this was the last question of ncert so we'll just solve more two three questions so that you can have a better grip on your uh, you know solving uh, techniques you can solve the answers with more confidence
So now we will discuss the keywords which are given in the NCRT. Okay. So the first keyword given is acid rain. So what is the meaning of acid rain? Acid rain. First of all, whenever we burn something, okay, whenever something is burned, so what happen? The substance burns. That means it combines with the oxygen and the oxides are formed. Like when carbon dioxide burns. So first of all, we have discussed acid rain. Now we'll talk about the next one, which is calorific value. Okay. So children, what is the meaning of calorific value? The amount of heat which is produced due to the complete combustion of a substance. How much? One, like the substance, the substance which is producing the heat is what? At least like what? One kg fuel we are talking about. Okay. So the amount of heat which is produced by the burning of one kg of fuel is the calorific value of that substance, that fuel. Okay. On the basis of the calorific value only, the substance is categorized or said as fuel or they cannot be taken in the category of fuel. Okay. See, all the substance burns. All the means maximum, many substance burns. But do we call all the substance as a fuel? No. Why? Because it depends upon the calorific value. If a substance produces good amount of heat on burning, that means it is a good fuel. Okay, so this is about the calorific value. Now, come to the third one, next one, combustion. Now, what is the meaning of combustion, children? Combustion means the process of burning. When something burns in presence of oxygen to produce heat and light, then this process is known as combustion. Okay, what is combustion, children? When any substance undergoes what? When substance is burning. Okay, when some substance burns in presence of oxygen to produce heat and light, then it is known as combustion. Now, come to the next one. Next is deforestation. Cutting of the trees. Okay, cutting of the trees is what? Deforestation. Now, explosion. It is a type of the combustion, isn't it? So, what is the meaning of explosion, children? When a substance undergoes a combustion, but which kind of combustion? Along with heat and light, when even sound is produced, then it is known as explosion. The best example of this is what? The crackers. The crackers, when you burn the crackers, heat is produced, light is produced and along with that, a good amount of sound is also produced. Okay? And that is the reason that for enjoying the sound, heat and light, people burn crackers, which we all know shouldn't be. Isn't it? Because it harms our environment. It um, is very, uh, you know, it's polluting our mother earth. And so we should ban crackers at least for ourselves. Isn't it? Now, come to the next one, flame. See, what is a flame? When the substance burns in its vapor state. Okay. When the combustible substance is in vapor state, that means when a combustible substance is a vapor, it combines with oxygen. That means at that time, flame is produced. Okay. So, this flame which is produced, it depends, it's what it depends upon a substance. If the substance is a burning in its vapor form, then only the flame will be produced or else flame won't be produced. Okay. Now, come to the fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher is, in a, is a device which is of red color, which can be seen in, you know, uh, hospitals, schools, banks, various places. And we have studied, it is of three, like we study three kinds, okay. Uh, so, uh, like different kinds of extinguishers are used to extinguish different kind of fires. Now, the next one is fuel. Children, the fuel, how can we say that this is fuel only when it burns and it gives lot or good amount of energy, then we can say that it is a fuel. That means what decides that this particular thing is fuel or not because many things burn. So, the calorific heat, okay, the amount of heat which is produced on the combustion of 1 kg, okay, 1 kg of a fuel of a substance it decides whether it is a fuel or not 
or whether it is a good fuel or not ok. Now fuel efficiency that means fuel has the amount of heat which it can produce is known as fuel efficiency. Come to the next one global warming. Now what is the meaning of global warming children? Global warming means what? When due to the like like when the fossil fuels are used to the greater extent then it pollutes the atmosphere. It pollutes the atmosphere in which way like oxides are formed ok. So, when these oxides are formed along with the, these the gases like carbon dioxide is released ok. Then methane is released and these gases has a tendency to trap the sun's heat and they do not allow the sun's heat to release back into the atmosphere ok. When the sun's heat is trapped and it remains on the surface of the earth, it increases the temperature of the earth which is known as global warming. That means by increase ok, the increase in the temperature of earth by certain uh, you know degrees also can be disastrous. So, we have to be very very alert and careful. Now, the next one is idle fuel. So, which fuel can be idle? A fuel which uh, you know do not release any kind of uh, smoke ok, uh, neither the harmful or like any kind no smoke should be there you know there are certain fuels which release harmful uh, smoke there are certain substances which release poisonous smoke ok. Then the idle fuel do not leave ash ok. Idle fuel do not pollute the atmosphere to the level as the other fuels or the fossil fuels do. It is always easy and now uh, to manage how easy to manage that means easy to manage means easy to control easy to you know transport transportation is easy ok storing is easy ok calorific heat should be very high when we say about the idle fuel the calorific uh, value uh, of the particular fuel should be very high ignition temperature should be high ok and again the ignition temperature should be quite uh, uh, higher than the room temperature or else just you keep the fuel and it will catch fire. So, all these qualities it should be eco friendly, it should be easy to, it should be cheaper also, it should be easily available also. So, all these qualities uh, fuel which has is known as idle fuel. See no fuel can be totally 100 percent idle, but maybe somewhere somewhat should stand near the idle fuel ok. Now ignition temperature we have discussed this thing ample amount of time n number of times that minimum temperature which is required for a substance to catch fire is known as ignition temperature. Now inflammable substances just try to recall what is the meaning of inflammable substances if you read somewhere be alert inflammable substances ok. So, what is there that means the substances which catches fire very easily the substance which undergoes combustion very easily or the substances whose ignition temperature is very very low all these are what the substances these can be known as inflammable substances or highly inflammable substances ok. So, these were the key words of the these of these uh, of uh, I am so sorry of this lesson ok. So, now we will have uh, glance on few more questions. So, to start with 